So I think composition has been like a natural outgrowth from my classical music training as a pianist and a cellist and um, someone who was interested in writing songs as a teenager. So I think my interest in wanting to create led me to want to study composition. Do you know what I love about my teenage songs is they're really honest and they're really pure and basic and actually it's quite nice to kind of go back to that and just remember that you're trying to communicate with, with an audience and so yeah I don't know if they're going to be released but, <laughs> but they're good good material. My training is in composition and um, I did second study cello um, with Sue Southerly who plays in the LPO and David Kennedy um, who teaches at Trinity Laban so it's my journey kind of came out of me wanting to just make music and kind of singing on the side and then fusing that with my cello training so it's been quite a mix in terms of self-teaching and and um, being taught and now finding the balance between both those different worlds in some some sense i think whilst i was studying at trinity lab and i definitely had more kind of contemporary and as it were music language and now that i've it's been some years since graduating from Manhattan School of Music where I did my master's. I found that my compositional voice has changed a lot and has moved closer to the songwriting voice and finding a way of balancing the two and not being so extreme. Time management is the key. I do know like in order for me to feel like the composer side of me, I need to leave London generally and take some time out. Um, I found that the essence of, of creating, it's still the same process. It's still, um, I need to empty my mind. I need to just give space for something to emerge in terms of what I want to say. Um, but I don't worry about it too much. I know in general, I like rhythms, I like grooves, I like melodies and I like harmony. And so from, from that point, it usually flows naturally in either direction with lyrics or without lyrics is, is usually the, the biggest distinction between the two. Yeah. I must say I've loved working with um, the Ligeti Quartet. They've been really open and fun and it's been a really nice back and forth to help me kind of shift my ideas. So the, the main difference is that drafting process. There's left, less of a drafting process for me. But that, that happens in rehearsal with the band, um, a bad gig or two, <laughs> or a good one. Um, so my drafting process is less conscious for myself than with other people. It's definitely a big consideration thinking about amplified music and non-amplified. The intimacy of non-amplified works really well in terms of me as a performer if, um, if it's a song that I can do that way. Um, and if the venue is right and the sound, sometimes you find that you're pushing too much and actually it'd be easier if there was a little bit of support. But working with the quartet, I had to go with the non-amplified sound naturally because for the most part, they'll be doing acoustic concerts. It's the sense of intimacy that is most at the forefront of my mind when I think about non-amplified. Mm. Um, at the same time, you know, closely mic'd sounds you can get the little extra textures so textures and flavor and groove but on the whole i like to start from an acoustic space and work out for me um to be commissioned by Cheltenham music festival it's a huge huge thing it's like amazing i'm so excited <laughs> yeah it's a prestigious festival it's a place where basically the highest and the best are coming together and, and enjoy and experience music so it feels like a great privilege and hopefully the first of many. My piece is called Mento Mood and the genesis of the idea is that this year 2018 we are celebrating 70 years of um, the Windrush docking from the Caribbean to the UK and so I felt like it'd be nice to just pay homage to Jamaica where my family are from and in particular thinking about my great-grandfather on my dad's side my dad's mum's dad <laughs> who played the mento box which is like a big mbira or a rumba box in a mento band which is like guitar banjo um, percussion um, mento box and they travel around and just play this kind of folk music which predates ska and reggae 
and there are all these like beautiful rhythms and lovely melodies and cheeky stories and I wanted something just light and fun um, just to celebrate really the essence of, of the Caribbean so that's the root of my idea. I've been working with the quartet a lot on vibe and groove and not rushing or playing ahead and just enjoying the kind of space of the rhythm it's or the pulse of it just to relax into that and and just enjoy no i'm generally inspired by um my heritage and i often do like jamaican folk songs and shows and so on but i think just anything that that reaches me emotionally so be it my family or situations that i've not experienced but i feel deeply touched by um one of my songs for Nigella Lawson, for example, totally nothing to do with me. Um, but anything that I feel moved by, I tend to feel inspired by. Thank you. Awesome! You guys are so awesome. easy to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.